Well, I don't have my hat. Dad, going. I left my hat. Well, wait a minute. I do have a hat sitting here. I hate my video without my hat. All right, now I got a hat. It was just laying here. So, this is my Chris and Holly hat. Chris and Holly sent me this thing. Um, I don't know why I like it. Because <laughs> it's dorky, I guess. Look, this video uh, is one I put up about two years ago. And the last two or three days, uh, a lot of what happened during this period, this was in 1957, I just got to thinking about it. The girl's name was Gail. And I was just 17 when all this occurred. Oh. Uh, Uh, and by the way, <clears throat> I noticed I was reviewing the video, and I noticed I'm cussing. It's mild cussing. It ain't nothing really bad, but I don't do that anymore if I can help it. So please excuse that, but there's some mild stuff in there. But... This has been on my mind for the last few days. I got to thinking, what if she did put that baby up for adoption and he's still alive, or her, whatever it was. The child would be... Oh gosh, 60 something years old. I can't ask Gail because Gail died a few years back. But it's just been on my mind, you know, maybe I should have did something different, I don't know. But bear in mind, I was only 17, she was 21. Um. But, I don't know, I just kind, kind of come apart. When she told me, when I was arguing about not having an abortion for the baby, she was telling me I was just a boy and like I shouldn't have any say-so in the decision-making on that. And, you know, I might have been a boy in some people's eyes, but... She didn't, oh well. Anyway, this is not a remake, it's the actual video. And there's actually a little piece in there about my little white Maltese dog, the one that's gone, gone missing is in there too. And uh, Cause when I was getting up out of the chair, I fell down on the ground. My dogs come running up didn't hurt me but in hindsight I wish I could go back uh, been many years ago and I guess I, I actually say that that girl Gail that was my very first love I really loved her and I don't don't ask me if it was puppy I don't know all I know is I was smitten and we spent a lot of time together and we lived together for about six months after her grandmother died and we cl they closed the boarding house me and her and my dad 
uh, rented a house together and we all lived in that house together. But that didn't last long because that's the time she come up pregnant and stuff. Anyhow, you can make some comments if you want what you think I should have done or what you think I did the right thing. I don't know because I, uh, I've kind of got amnesia for about six months there. And I don't remember, I started remembering stuff from on my 18th birthday when I went down to the Army recruiting and, and joined the Army. And I remember going back to see her when I was on leave after my basic training at Fort Jackson. I was transferred to Fort Bragg, Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is not too far from Winston-Salem. And... Um, I hitchhiked on a weekend pass to Winston-Salem to see her and see what happened with the baby. And, of course, who knows? Anyway, I hope you kind of find the video interesting. I, I'm reluctant to say enjoy it because, well, maybe you can enjoy it's part of my life, you know, it's something to happen. Well, I'm taking a break. I don't know if I'm getting lazy or I'm just getting old. Probably a little of both. Um, I was thinking about a when I was uh, 16 and 17. Quit school in six when I was sixteen, and I was living with my daddy, and he told me, "When you quit school, you're going to work." So I did, and if you smoke, you're going to have to buy them. So I did. Me and him, we lived in this boarding house. Him and I had this room together. Slept the same big double bed together and all that. Had a little TV in there. And it was kind of like a family that the old lady that run that, Ms. Ivester, uh, I kind of got attached to her. And I was calling them all and all that stuff. And she had this granddaughter. I was 16 at the time. The granddaughter was 21. And, of course, I was smitten with her. And her and I did a lot of things together at first, but we wasn't like girlfriend and boyfriend. I don't think we was girlfriend and boyfriend back when we was doing stuff, picking wildflowers. But she, after about a year, she didn't have a driver's license, and I taught her how to drive. I got my license the day I was 16. And um, she went and got this 53 Black Oldsmobile. And I was teaching her how to drive it, and she had her learner's permit, and we was driving down the street one day, and she didn't slow down to make a turn, you know. I mean, I, my wife did that one time when she was learning how to drive, but she didn't slow down to make that turn, wound up sitting in the middle of somebody's front yard there on the corner, and the police came. 
and he, I don't know, he seemed shocked that I was teaching her to drive and her older than me. But, um, we didn't get a ticket or anything. But she sure, she scared the pee hunky doodles out of me that day. But, make a long story short, she was my first love. I mean, I really love that woman. Girl. Back then, she was a girl to me. And we did get involved when I was 17. And I just remembered a lot of this stuff. I had put a lot of that stuff out of my mind, the way her and I split up and everything. Uh, I couldn't remember certain things. And it all came back here about six months ago. But her grandmother died, and we wound up moving into a house. We closed the boarding house down. We moved into a house. It was me, my daddy, and her. And I think daddy was jealous of me and her because he was... He was acting all weird because he knew me and her weren't just friends anymore. We was friendly friends. And uh, we took off one time to Nashville, Tennessee on a dang motorcycle and her driving it. She borrowed it from a friend. That was a, <laughs> that was a good trip. We didn't sleep in motels and then slip in the woods. Drive that bike in the woods and make camp. But uh, anyway, and she worked for RJ Reynolds Tobacco Company, and uh, she she was I don't what having to buy cigarettes, and she worked she worked at Reynolds, and I smoked Winston's, and that's what she made every night. And she'd bring me a hand, you know, forty or fifty cigarette loose ones. They weren't in a pack every night and she said they knew they would every, the employees were taking cigarettes like that so I don't know if it was stealing or not but at any rate sometime when I was 17 uh, she had she had to go to the doctor I don't think they had them pregnancy test things back then but she, come back one day and said she won't gonna say anything to me but looks like they, we've got a problem and uh, she was pregnant about three or four months and and she was going like we've got to find somewhere to get an abortion and I have never, even back then, I never believed in abortion. I think it's wrong. I still think it's wrong. Uh, but certain circumstances, maybe like with incest, something like that, it's probably okay. I, well, it's never okay, but that would be acceptable to me. But we had a big disagreement over that and a big blow up. And then she started saying, well, you're just a boy, you know. And that just killed me, you know, when she said that. I mean, I felt so bad. Uh, it just, it just killed me. You know, I, I, I couldn't believe she would actually think about killing the baby. And then I'm thinking, well, it's going to be my child that I ought to have some say in it. I don't think back then a man had any say in it, but uh, she, we just had a big blow up and right after that, I don't remember nothing about leaving or how I left. Uh, I think I was with my daddy and my brother at another place and 
I took off from there. I can't. I, it's not straight in my head. And I went to Jacksonville, Florida, to my mother's. And a few months later, the day I turned 18, uh, I joined the army. And a few months after that, I was I was I was stationed at uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, so I was pretty close to Winston Salem. This is where me and that girl was at. Uh, she, I went to see her. I went to look her up. I wanted to see, see the baby, or if she killed the baby. And went down there, and I, she said she'd give it up for adoption, but somebody else told me that she had an abortion, that the baby was never born. So I never seen her anymore after that, but. Uh, I sure did love her. And back then, she... Baby, get over here! My dog's drifting over on somebody else's property. Get over here! You know better than that. Get here! Who you think you are? Huh? What do you think you're doing? I didn't call you up here. You little... You know better than go off like that. All right, I ain't got time for this. Jump down. Lord. Dogs, love them too. Now I done forgot where I was at. But anyway, my first love... Um, it's amazing to me how I put that out of my mind, didn't think about it no more after all these years, and and it kept bothering me. At first, when I started trying to remember, I couldn't remember certain things that I should be remembering about that time, and it was worrying the crap out of me why I couldn't remember it. But I finally pulled it out. I, I, I figured it out. Her name was Gail. But nowadays, if a 21-year-old woman was sleeping with a 16-year-old kid or a boy, she would be considered a child predator. And I don't think that's right even today that a 21-year-old woman can't sleep with a 16-year-old boy because that, oh, that boy, he's not being hurt. Uh, It, it, it's consensual, and I just don't agree with that. But it is what it is. Now I got to get back out here and go to work. That's my that's my wood dauber story for today. I got lots of stories. So. Stay tuned. <laughs> well, that's what that's what it looks like when you fall out of the chair and bust your ass, and you're laying on the ground here, and you're looking at blue sky in amongst all them tree limbs. Um, I ain't hurt nothing. Uh, at least nothing's hurting. But I'm sure flat on the ground. And now, I thought I'd turn the camera on. But I got to figure out how the hell I'm going to. Hey, booby. Come here, my baby. You going to help pop you up? Come here, girl. You eat you, my baby. Yes, it's my baby girl. Here, too, baby. God dang it. Don't, I don't want no face kisses. No. No. Get out of the way. Dad, you don't drop my glasses. Oh, I don't like where you stepping, Bailey. Oh, I don't see how them little paws can hurt. She put them on you and put them in the right place. She can hurt a fella. Shit.
Well, I can't. I'm gonna have to have both hands to get up, so. Y'all, oh crap. Oh shit. There's my glasses. I hate like hell to call my daughter out here and shoot. Oh shit. Oh lord. Usually if I can get on my knees and get hold of the chair, I can get up. I ain't broke nothing. At least it was soft dirt and grass. There's my coffee. Glad there ain't nobody to look. Well, hell. Somebody is looking. Deciding whether I need help or not, I guess, but uh Okay. What makes it so hard? I got no feeling in my feet. Sometimes I can't tell which way my feet's turn. Oh, I got my my pants won't be falling down no more. Some one of my grandsons got me. Ouch! Maybe I did twist that knee a little bit. My grandson got me some overalls. I've been wanting some of these for a while. But I'm going to have to have two or three pair because I'm going to want to wear them all the time. He only got me one pair. These darn things are expensive. And by the time I pay all my living expenses every month, all I got left is a hundred and... Well, I got a raise this time. I got a hundred and seventy-four dollars. But that's to buy clothes personal stuff or just spend eat out of a want to what you don't do anymore much but I like my overalls he got me a hat to go with him too because he said he hates this red hat but I ain't getting rid of my red hat but maybe he'd trade that one in for a red one then I might wear it now I'm gonna try to get up again no. No. Oops. Okay. <laughs> 